Get off the road! All right. Hi, I'm Mike of Mike's Road Trip, and on this episode, I'm going to share with you what it's like to rent an RV using RVZ, the newest way to rent an RV in the United States. Now, if you're not familiar, RVZ is a peer-to-peer -peer platform just like Airbnb, but for RVs. Now, I actually just used RVZ for the very first time on a road trip from Phoenix to Sholo. And given how popular RVing is right now, I thought it might be helpful to share with you what it's like to rent through a peer-to-peer -peer network versus one of the big boys like Cruise America. So come along with me and let me show you around. With Cruise America, you have essentially one option in three different sizes. With RVZ, you can log on to their website and choose from hundreds of options depending on where you live and your needs. From Class A, Class C, fifth wheels to travel trailers. On the RVZ website, you can narrow your search down to the type of RV you're looking for and even the price you want to stay within. Once you've selected the unit that you'd like to reserve, just send the owner a quick message, just like Airbnb, and they'll get back with you with a confirmation. One of the nice things about RVZ is that many of the RV owners go above and beyond, often leaving goodies in the fridge or offering to pick you up at the airport if needed. After you have your RV sorted, the next thing you might want to do is reserve a campsite. Campspot.com is a great site for seeing what's out there. You can search by location and then filter down based on price and or other amenities you might need. Campspot is nice for those newer to RVing since you can browse and book instantly and they have a lowest price guarantee. Then, on your reservation date, pick up the RV at your agreed upon location. Howdy, are you Chris? Yes, sir. I'm Mike. Hey, Mike. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. So this is it, huh? Yes, sir. This is a 2019 Winnebago. It's a 25J model, about 27 foot long. Just a good old dependable, straightforward RV. Awesome. All right, so basically you have some underneath storage here, little small compartments. They have a little mat that you can put in front of the door to cut down on some of the dust. Okay. Uh, this is a little level leveler that I'll show you in a minute. Okay. It's kind of cool. Kids like it. Uh, very small storage here. Basically these are all open, available for you to put a couple little things, odds and ends in. Okay. Uh, this one has the water hose. So this is for hooking up your fresh water. Okay. On the other side it has a filter and a pressure regulator built in. Let's see, on the back have a four bike bike rack. Oh, so if cool. you want to take a bike with you, okay. this is something that we just let people use if they want to. If okay. not, protects the back bumper. Okay. As you can see. <laughs> so. so on this side, we have a much larger storage area. Oh yeah. yeah. You can basically have some uh, camp chairs, uh, propane grill. Uh, there's some firewood, but I believe there's still a fire ban in all of Arizona. Oh. So you can't do that. Okay. Uh, get the leveling pads and then the, uh, basically the cradle Little slinky for the for the black water hose oh, oh, for okay. when okay. you go to clean out. Right here we have our electrical hookup. So if you look in on this side, you'll see it's plugged in to the generator port. Yep. So basically, you want it either plugged in there or plugged into a campsite. Gotcha. So if you're boondocking, you'll just leave it plugged in and use a generator. But the reason being, you want it plugged in here or there is if you turn the generator on and it's not plugged in. Nothing will happen. Yeah, yeah. So if that happens, the first thought is, did I plug it back in? Yeah. Yeah. So it's got, I'm familiar. That's <laughs> happened to me before. Right. It's happened to me before. So. <laughs> Regular unleaded. Um, it's basically 87 octane. I tell people just use your rear tire as your reference point when you pull up to the pump. Oh, okay. Stop Perfect. it at the pump and oh, you'll yeah. be good to go. Yeah. Uh, if you prefer cable when you're there, you have cable right here that you can hook up and it'll play on the TV. I personally like to unplug. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then uh, city water fill, so basically when you get to a campsite, the white water hose mm -hmm. plugs into the RV campsite, the other end plugs into here. Okay. When you turn on the water, you have water for sure. the whole RV. Sure. So if, you, if you're not using the holding tank, you definitely want to be plugged in here. Uh, and then if you're going to be boondocking with fill it, I think it's got about two thirds of a tank right now. I don't fill it up because I don't want to add a whole lot of weight for you oh, as okay. you're traveling, gotcha. just cuts on your gas mileage. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so those are your two options. Okay. Here's the fun part. 
This is your black water hose. You have the end that will fit in to the ground. And then basically the other end, just twist on just like so. Pop that in the ground. The okay. other end attaches to a port right underneath here. Oh, I see, yeah. Yep, so basically you have your black water and your gray water. So what you do, this is a master valve. Okay. This is for the black water. Okay. So basically when you pull this, it's coming. Yeah. So make sure that your hose is hooked up and it is properly affixed in the ground. Right, right. You will not like the way that turns right. out. Right. <laughs> so basically you twist the hose on, you pull the valve. Once you hear that it's pretty much stopped, yep. the gray valve is right here behind it. Gotcha. Pull that. That will use the gray water to flush sure, the hose sure. out. Yep. And it just minimizes the amount of extra cleaning you have to do sure. to kind of rinse it out because yeah. You, you really want to make sure it's rinsed out, yeah, yeah, otherwise yeah, yeah. It, it will smell funny. Um, and then just shut the gray valve, shut the black valve, you're good to go. Yeah, okay. So it's pretty pretty straightforward. So that's your uh, that's the fun part. This right here is just the access to the propane. You won't have to do anything here. Propane is a uh, consumable that you're allowed to use on this. Basically, you're not required to fill it back up before I you see. bring it back. So it's a 14 gallon tank. It's got about probably five eighths of a tank, which I've had this for about four months now, and I've only filled the tank up once. So it's wow. a very efficient rig, yeah. so I yeah. think you're gonna be fine. And that runs the refrigerator, and the, the air water. conditioning? Nope, just the refrigerator, the water heater, and then the furnace, if you decide to run the furnace. Now granted, it's been summer, so that's one reason why it's been very efficient. Ah. Um, I've had people take it out for a weekend and use maybe a quarter of a tank, you know, when you're going up to the cold weather areas, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah I've, I've had a unit a little smaller than this that w went over two weeks without filling the propane. And we used it a lot because it was the winter, so mm -hmm. we had heat going, hot water going, yep. the stove, yeah, the this, refrigerator. Yeah, this thing, the, the refrigerator on this doesn't run on propane, it runs on the inverter. Oh, so that takes some oh. of the load off, but like my sun seeker there, the uh, refrigerator, the water heater, the furnace, a lot run, uh, runs on it, and we took a 10-day road trip with it with a full tank and came back with about a fourth of a tank. So they've made yeah. these rigs very efficient oh, yeah, yeah, with yeah. the way that they yeah. run. And then here's your generator, which this starts from inside the rig, so you don't have to uh -oh. do anything, but if for some reason something trips or whatnot, this is where okay. you would come, and there's a little circuit breaker reset. If something like that were to happen, just call me. I can okay. walk you through it. But that's So this is the inside of the RV. It's very, nice. very straightforward. My wife loves it because everything is functional. It's got plenty of room. Um, in here, you're stocked with plates, cups, oh, basically okay. everything that you great, need. Great. Even some paper plates left over. It, it's kind of nice, kind of like Airbnb, how sometimes when you go there, you leave some of the paper plates that you don't need. Yeah, yeah. That's what people do. Yeah. So I tell people, yeah. hey, use up the paper plates yeah. before you buy your own. It's got basically a three burner stove. Works just like a residential. Basically turn it on, hit the spark, lights up. Okay. Microwave, just a small little, I call it a college style microwave. Yeah. Um, to use a microwave and to use air conditioner, you will need to have the generator on or be plugged to electric. So if you're out staying, you know, out in the wilderness on your own, you'll definitely want to run the generator okay. in order to do that. So just okay. keep that in mind. Uh, right here is your controls for everything. Uh, the inverter. So basically the way this works is this has 12 volt batteries that run everything through an inverter which allows the, the plugs to work and whatnot. You want this green light to be on. Okay. So basically if the green light goes off, then either your batteries have run out or it can just trip off for whatever reason. So I tell people just every once in a while make sure the green light's on. And you can charge it by turning the engine on or? Well turn the engine on and then run the generator. Oh okay. Yeah. You know, okay. But while you're driving it's also charging too. So okay. usually it only comes into play when people are really Wishing off the beaten path yeah. for a while. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And the refrigerator basically runs off the uh, the inverter, so have these little Velcro things. But what will happen oh, is your your refrigerator <laughs> won't stay cool, yeah, so yeah. nobody wants to have hot beer. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, that's for uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, this is, has a really good size refrigerator on this for yeah, being a, a smaller good. unit. Uh, my wife loves this. Our bigger unit, our bigger RV has a smaller fridge, so is yeah, that right? doesn't make any sense. Wow. Well, Chris, thank you so much. No I really problem. appreciate it and uh, looking forward to it. Mike, I hope you have a great time. All right, thank you so much. Some people may be intimidated by driving an RV for the first time, and I can appreciate that. But trust me, it's not as difficult as it might seem. Yes, you're driving a giant box on wheels, but the engine and brakes aptly provide the power and stopping you need to feel safe. 
One of the biggest benefits off the bat renting through a peer-to-peer -peer platform like RVZ is that the RV comes complete with everything you need to have a good time. Uh, just like Airbnb where you would expect there to be sheets and pillows and pots and pans, same thing with uh, an RV from RVZ or perhaps any peer-to-peer -peer platform. Now, the, uh, that's completely in contrast to what you would expect from, say, Cruise America, where the units come stripped with everything. Uh, you have to remember and you have to have a checklist of everything you need to bring. And so that takes a lot of work. So that's uh, one of the things that you need to weigh uh, when you go out and rent an RV. Something else uh, people may appreciate is that when you rent through RVZ or some other peer-to-peer -peer network is that when you rent your RV, there's no corporate branding. So you can kind of travel incognito, if you will. Another consideration is that those big RV rental companies, they're buying in bulk and they're trying to get the best price possible. So they don't have a lot of upgrades. In contrast, when you rent through a peer-to-peer -peer platform, they, these are individually owned. So they will typically have a number of upgrades that you wouldn't expect from an RV rental company. So a lot of people may or may not know what boondocking is. And that means that you're able to just camp where you can find a good spot, like on public land, such as uh, the National Forest or BLM land. And it's one of my favorite ways of camping. You get in the middle of nowhere and it's often quiet and you don't have anyone to contend with. And it's, it's kind of fun to be off the grid. Not to mention, it's a lot less expensive to boondock than it is to go to a, a full hookup campsite. RVing is such a great way to travel, especially these days. It's relaxing, easy to social distance, and can be more affordable than a traditional travel experience. RVing wraps up your hotel, kitchen, and transportation into one neat little package. Well, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions about renting an RV or RVZ in general, leave a comment below. I'm absolutely happy to help. And if you find yourself in the Phoenix area interested in renting this unit behind me, the one featured in this video, I'll leave a link in the description box. And if you click that link, regardless if you rent this, this RV or another one, uh, you'll get a discount from RVZ on your very first rental. So thank you so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you on the road.